sweat of a slave, blood of a king, heart of the Lord's lion, though it seems my imperfections get the best of me, and I know I'm the captain of this ship, but iniquity is in the driver's seat. Now how do I compete? Where I like Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ Bless. I'm Officer Mattathias. Officer C. All right, today's topic um, is entitled Friends, all right? Um, we're going to discuss how to go about friendship, um, who is supposed to be your friends once you are a repentant Israelite, um, and also, you know, different trials within friendship itself, all right? Lord's will, you will be edified by the scriptures brought out today. Um, start off with Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So matter, uh, so no matter what the situation is, all right, we must always keep God's commandments and the faith in Christ. All right, we must always fear the Most High. From there, go. Uh, give me uh, Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, and the Apocrypha, chapter six, and we're gonna start at verse five. All right, because now you're a repentant Israelite, um, you're now your new creature. So the things you learned in the world, you can't do anymore. All right, so Lord's will, you'll get some edification um, on this topic. Give me that. Sirach, chapter 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. 6, verse 5. 6, verse 5. Sweet language will multiply friends. All right, so the scripture says sweet language will multiply friends. So your speech, the way you carry yourself, all right? So if you do want friends, read it again. Sweet language will multiply friends. Mm -hmm. And a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. And a fair speaking tongue, um, the way you speak to people, they'll speak nicely back to you. So let's say, for instance, in the world, if you are an antisocial person, all right, and it's truth, if you keep these laws and abide by these commandments, it's read all the way through. Sweet language will multiply friends, mm -hmm. and a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. So now, you know, through the power of Most High in, uh, in Christ, you can now have friends. If you didn't have friends before, as a repentant Israelite, keep these commandments and you'll get friends. All right, from there, give me Proverbs 18 and 24. We're going to come back to that. All right, so right now we're dealing on um, showing yourself friendly to others. Alright. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Read that. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Must do what? Must show himself friendly. So you can't be standoffish. Alright. If you if your heart's desire is to have some friends, cheer up. Alright. Um, be cordial. Be courteous. Be nice to those. Alright. Don't be standoffish. Don't always have an attitude. Smile when you see people. Read it all the way through. A man that have friends must show himself friendly. Mm -hmm. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But then, you know, you may have a lot of friends, a lot of people that you know. Um, but you will have one friend, Lord's will, that is going to stick closer than a brother. All right? From there, they're going to go back to Ecclesiasticus and read verse 6 for me. Sirach, chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Be in peace with many. So, just like the first part says, show that self friendly, right? So, be in peace with a lot of brothers and sisters. Read. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. But have one counselor of a thousand, all right? Because this is that friend that you're going to build a close relationship with. That's going to be your brother or your sister. One that you can confide in, all right? Read 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. But... If you if if you are gonna get somebody like that, all right, somebody that's really close to you, you must prove that person first. That doesn't mean as soon as you show yourself friendly, say, oh, I think this is gonna be my best buddy. You don't know that because you haven't been any uh, through anything with that person. All right, from there, uh, give me Sirach 19 and 4. All right, so you don't you don't want to move things too fast. Patience is key. All right, as a repentant Israelite, having patience is is key. Read that. Sirach chapter 19 verse 4. Mm -hmm. He that is hasty to give credit is like-minded so the scripture says those who rush into friendship trying to build that relationship if you're rushing into that you're like-minded why because you can end up telling your secrets to the devil all right they may show themselves as righteous but in their inner their in their inward thoughts they're not righteous all right from there give me john 5 and 39 okay what we're going to do um is go through these scriptures so we can see first of all can you can you be friends with just anybody we're going to go through these scriptures and find out. John chapter 5 and verse 39. Uh -huh. Search the scriptures. Do what? Search the scriptures. Mm -hmm. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Uh huh. And they are they which testify of me. All right, through that eternal life, how do we get the kingdom? Keeping God's law. So we need to go to the law and see who can be our friends. Give me Deuteronomy 7, uh, 7 and 1. We'll read down. All right. 
So you may have had a lot of friends. You went to, went to a mixed high school, right. all right? So like, yeah, um, Cindy, man, that was my best friend growing up, senior year. Uh, we had a ball, graduated, went to college, da 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 Now you and this truth. It's like, well, I, I think Cindy needs to hear this truth too, but Cindy happens to be an Edomite. Let's see what the Bible says about it. Start at verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. Mm -hmm. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess thee, mm -hmm. and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. So the scripture just lists out different nations, right? Read on. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Right thou shalt make no covenant with them. They shall make no covenant with them. So any nation outside of Israel, you shall make no covenants with them. So that's key. So if you had the question, can I be friends with the heathen? The answer according to the scripture, we're to say it, thou shalt what? Thou shalt make no covenant with them. There's the answer. So no, you cannot have friends who are outside of Israel. Okay? From there, let's go to Ezra, Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. So you may say, man, she's, she's been there for me since day one. You feel what I'm saying? They, they adopted me. They brought me in. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, when I needed food, they gave me food. All right, let's see. Even though they were nice to you, let's see what the Bible says. Give me Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do, mm -hmm. and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Eshaskadon, king of Assyria, which brought us up hither. All right. So the heathens, they asking, man, we want to help y'all build the temple, all right? We want to help, we want to help y'all rebuild y'all temple, right? So they're showing what? They want to help you. They want to provide for you. They want to do great things for you. Read on. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, you have nothing to do with us. Read that again. You have nothing to do with us. All right. It doesn't matter how nice they are, all right? They not us. They're not the chosen seed. All right. So just like they said in the law. Make no covenant with these heathens. They are not our people. So if you're wondering, once again, no, it don't matter what they do, what kind of justice they do for you. Yeah, we're supposed to live peacefully with all men. I'm not saying, say, hey, you're the devil, but not supposed to have any friendship with them, all right? From there, let's go to Malachi 1 and 4. So in 2015, it just so happens that the Israelites, we are in captivity in Babylon the Great. It's ruled by who? Esau, right? Now, let's see, according to the Bible, who they are. And let's, then, then you'll really get the picture. Give me that. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. So Esau says they will return and build the desolate places. After the, the Renaissance so on, they, they came back. All right, the rebirth of the Edomites, so-called white man. So the reason I'm going here is to show you what our people face here in America. All right. For the most part, most of us did grow, you know, some of us grew up around white people. All right. Read on. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. Mm -hmm. And they shall call them the border of wicked. The border of what? The border of wicked. The border of wickedness. All right. From there, give me Isaiah 5 and 20. All right. So you got to understand, the most high God is doing this for your benefit. Because if you fellowship with them, if those are your friends, what you going to be doing? Well, um, you're going to forsake the Sabbath to go do what Cindy or Christopher wants to do. All right, give me that. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Woe unto them that call evil good. Say that again. Woe unto them that call evil good. Well, they're really nice to me. I know, you know, we have great times together. We have a lot of memories. We grew up together. Read it again. Woe unto them that call evil good mm -hmm. and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, right. that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. All right, so the most high God says enough. You shall not. You shall have no friends of the other nations. All right. So now we're about to switch gears. Let's go back to uh, Proverbs eighteen and twenty-four. All right. So we're going to focus on the um, the latter part of this verse right here. Proverbs chapter eighteen, verse twenty-four. Uh huh. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. A friend that sticketh closer than the brother. So what is that talking about? He's saying that, that your actual brother, your actual seed. Give me Romans chapter 9, verse 3. All right. 
Let's see, what, 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 is, what does he mean by your actual brother? Romans chapter 9 verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brother. For your what? For my brother. Read. My kinsmen according to the flesh. Who are these kinsmen? Who are Israelites. Who are who? Who are Israelites. Who are Israelites. So when he says as brothers, that's who he's talking about. He's talking about the Israelite brothers and sisters. Those are going to be your close friends. All right. All right, from there, uh, give me Sirach 13 and 16. All right, so now you know who can be your friends, right? So everything's just going to be cool from then on. You could be friends with any Israelite, right? Let's see what the Bible says. Sirach chapter 13, verse 16. Mm -hmm. All flesh consorted according to kind. It says all flesh consorted according to kind. So Romans 9 and 6 says all Israel is not all. It is not Israel. All right, so you have to watch and see even with your brothers and sisters, who you associate yourself around. So it's just not that easy. All right, read it again. All flesh consorted according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. And a man will cleave to his like, all right? So uh, Malachi 3 and 16 says the righteous is supposed to stay in communication, all right? Read verse 17. Verse 17, what fellowship hath the wolf with the lamb? So the wolf is a predator, all right? A lamb is a chill animal. All right, read. So the sinner with the God. So the sinner with the God is so. If you proclaim righteousness, you shouldn't be uh, visiting, you know, those family members going to the club, celebrating birthdays, da 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 da. Right. Even though the Israelites are living like Gentiles right now. Right. All right. And even in this truth, you young women, um, you need to stay. If, if, if you see another young woman, she's not being profitable, disrespecting her husband, don't want to listen to leadership, why would you fellowship with her? And you young men. You need to be sitting amongst the elders. You need to be fellowshipping so you can get an understanding. You can get a high level of learning. Don't be around brothers and sisters who, who don't want to do the work of the Most High. Okay? You got something? No. All right. From there, let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 5. All right. So, now I'm going to switch gears. Um, now, let's say if you had a friend. All right? Both Israelites. Right? You both find out that you are an Israelite. So, now you're breaking the truth. Now the laws come out. Now, now... Lee, we're going to see if you should continue in that friendship or not continue in that friendship. All right, give me 1 John chapter 4, verse 5. 1 John chapter 4, verse 5. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear them. Read on. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Mm -hmm. He that is not of God heareth not us. All right, so the things we say is going to be in the scriptures, all right? So if you bringing out laws to your brother or sister, right? And they can't seem to comprehend it. Be patient, all right? But if they want to continue to rebel against the scriptures, re read verse 6 again. Verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. So that's the answer for you. So if they can't understand it, they must keep God's laws, all right, to make it to the kingdom, they are not of God. All right, so if you contemplate, if that's your... Um, if that's your spouse or if that's your friend or your actual blood brother or sister, that just that's your question right there. I mean, that's your question answer right there. All right, they are not of God. From there, let's go to uh, Matthew 13 and 21. All right. So, in regards to that, say you say you um you do get a friend, right? Um now this is going to that proven stage spoken of in uh Sirach 6 and 7. All right. You just can't have that one counselor if you haven't been through anything because you have to be aware of people like this. Give me Matthew 13, 21. Matthew chapter 13, verse 21. Yet have not root in himself. Read that again. Yet have he not root in himself, but dure for a while. All right, so but dure for a while. All right, so um, it says have not root. So he's not grounded. He's literally, he or she is just sticking around, all right? But... Once correction comes out, once the situation comes out, read on. For when tribulation, a persecution arises because of the word. Because of what? Because of the word. Because these laws came out, read. By and by, he is offended. He is offended. He or she is now offended. So that's why in uh, 1 John it just said, if they don't understand, they are not of God. Because if why would you get offended if somebody's teaching, telling you to keep God's laws? Why would that offend you? All right. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. It says blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in him. All right. Um, when God's words is brought out, whoever's not offended, it says blessed is he. So 
if you have a friend or if you're going through trials and tribulation and that friend can literally listen to the scriptures, say, say if they offended you or vice versa, and y'all can go through the scriptures and find out a solution, that is that friend, that one counselor out of many. That's a close friend. That's supposed to be like your brother or your sister. All right, from there, let's go to Proverbs 17 and 17. All right, dealing with that adversity. All right, how are you going to uh, prove a friend? Give me that. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. A friend loveth at all times. Uh huh. And a brother is born for adversity. It says a friend loveth at all times. What does that mean? What does it mean that a friend loveth at all times? All right, give me um, Leviticus 19 and 17, of course. And then we're going to go to James 5 and 19. All right, so it says a friend loveth. All right, give me that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So you shouldn't hate your brother, read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. And not suffer sin upon him. All right, so that's love. Um, that's that uh, the righteous smiting you, okay? That's showing love to you, brother. So Proverbs uh, 17 and 17, a uh, friend love at all times. All right, from there, give me uh, that James 5. James chapter 5, verse 19. Brother, if any of you do err from the truth, mm -hmm. and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. Shall save a soul from death. So that's that love spoken of in Leviticus 19 and 17. Read that all the way through from 19 again. Verse 19. Brother, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him. So that's your brother or sister going off. You literally see him like, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? You see him going off. But now if you weren't their friend, you wouldn't say nothing. You would just let them go into eternal damnation. All right, read it again. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way. The friend that loveth at all times, read. Shall save a soul from death. Shall save a soul from death and in return... What is that going to do for you? And shall hide a multitude of sin. So you see why it's so important. I am, we are our brother's keeper. All right. So that's what it means uh, when it says a friend shall love at all times. All right. From there, let's go back to um, Proverbs 17 and 17. All right. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. A brother is born for adversity. All right. Uh, from there, let's go to Proverbs 10 and 12. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Hatred stirred up strikes, but love covereth all sins. But love covereth all sins, all right? So a friend or a brother who likes to stay in a disagreement, all right? That's that's not that that's not that counselor. Count one counselor out of a thousand. That's not him or, or, or her. All right, read that again. Hatred stirred from scribes, mm -hmm. but love covered all sins. Love covered all sins. So that's something that brothers, well, sisters deal with that too. But now we really finna get um, something on the sisters. Let's go to Sirach chapter 11 and verse 2. All right. So as repentant Israelites, we got to stray away from all this nonsense. All right. We have to keep the peace uh, within our relationships, our friendships, um, and within the body. All right. Give me that. Sirach chapter 11 and verse 2. Commend not a man for his beauty, mm -hmm. neither a boy man for his outward appearance. It says, neither hate a man for his outward appearance. And females, that's something y'all, that's a stronghold on our females. All right? Y'all catch spirits just because a sister got a certain garment on or a certain drill or whatever. All right? Re read the last part again. Neither a boy a man for his outward appearance. It says, neither a poor a man for his outward appearance. So, don't do these things, all right? We're supposed to show, a friend is supposed to love at all times, not get jealous at all times. Right. All right, from there, let's go to Leviticus 19 and 11. How are we supposed to deal uh, with our brother and our, and our sisters in this truth? All right, as friends, as repentant Israelites. All right, give me that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Mm -hmm. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. We're not supposed to be dealing falsely with brethren or sisters, all right? Definitely, you shouldn't be stealing, all right? If that's what you, you know, profess yourself, you know, profess you, be yourself a friend to this person, you shouldn't do that, all right? You shouldn't steal to them, shouldn't bear, uh, deal falsely with them. Uh, from there, let's go to 1 Peter 3 and 11. And if, a, and if a quarrel or a disagreement does occur, which they will, this is what we're supposed to do, all right? Even though it's, uh, it, may, it may be hard, it doesn't feel good, we got to um, examine ourselves and overcome that. And this is what we should do. Give me that. 
First Peter chapter three and verse eleven. Uh huh. Let him eschew evil. Let him eschew evil. So get that off you. All right. Keep it moving. All right. Do not entertain the devil. Read. And do good. And do good to that friend. Read. Let him seek peace. Let him do what? Let him seek peace. And read on. And ensue it. All right. So that's what we got to do. We have to seek the peace with 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 everybody. All right. Uh, from there, let's go to James five and eight. James, James five and eight. chapter 5, verse 8. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draw not. Grudge not one against another. Do what? Grudge not one against another. Read. Brethren, let ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. All right, so why does it say these things? It says these things because we will go through these, all right? So we're supposed to listen to these scriptures, apply them in our life so we can seek the peace. All right. Just like the scripture uh, commands us to do. From there, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 17 and 17. All right. All right. Now we're going to deal with this adversity part. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Mm -hmm. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. And a brother is what? And a brother is born for adversity. And a brother is born for adversity. All right, from there, let's go to James 5 and 16. So that brother or sister that's born for adversity, this is that person that you're going to be able to build with. This is that person that's going to be there for you when you are in a low state. That's going to pick you up from that low state. Give me that. James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. Uh huh. And pray one for another. And pray one for another. Read. That ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. All right, so that's what we need. All right, that's what we're, that's what's going to get us out of these hard times. All right, because you can't you can't just open up to just anybody. That would be foolish. All right, from there, give me uh, Galatians chapter six and one. All right, so say that person comes to you, uh, your your brother or your sister comes to you. All right, they're confiding in you, and this is how you, this is what you're supposed to do. Give me that. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Uh -huh. Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fault. So, um, it says, if a man be overtaken in a fault, if something's heavy to him or her, read. Ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness. The spirit of meekness. All right, restore that person. All right, read. Consider thyself. Lest thou also be tempted. So you're supposed to treat this brother or sister just like you want them to treat you. All right, read. Bear ye one another's burden. Do what? Bear ye one another's burden. So when your brother hurt, you hurt. All right? When your sister hurt, uh, you hurt as well. Read. And so fulfill the law of Christ. So fulfill the law of Christ. All right? So that's how we're supposed to deal with our brothers and sisters. All right? We're supposed to sympathize, actually care about them. Don't be selfish. All right? Uh, from there, give me uh, Proverbs 20 and 19. So, you know, before that, can you go back to Sirach 19? I want you to read that first, 19 and 4. And then we're going to go to Proverbs. Sirach chapter 19, verse 4. Uh -huh. He that is hasty to give credit is like-minded. So, he that is hasty to give credit is like-minded. He's, he's a fool. That's what the scripture's saying. All right, and, I, and we're going to see why. Because you also got brothers and sisters um, that, you know, they pretend to be your friends. But just like in, uh, what was that, Matthew 13 and 21, when stuff gets hard, they hit the fan. Right. Let's give me um, Proverbs 20 um, and 19. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19. Uh -huh. He that goeth about as a tailbearer. As a what? As a tailbearer. All right, what is a tailbearer? A tailbearer is a brother or sister who can't keep their mouth closed, all right? They run and tell everybody's business. All right, read that again. He that goeth about as a tailbearer revealeth secret. They will reveal secret. That's why you can't confess your faults to this person. That's why you must prove that person. And it don't happen after six months. Sometimes it don't happen. It's not going to happen after a year. It's going to take steps. Are right, you going to have to go through different trials and tribulations with that brother or sister? Read all the way through. He that goeth about as a tailbearer revealeth secrets. Uh -huh. Therefore, meddle not with him. Do what? Meddle not with him. Do not fellowship with this brother or sister. Read. Meddle not with him that flatters with his lips. That flatters with his lips. Hey, hey, bro, I'm glad I met you, man. I'm going to stick to you like glue. Yep. All right? I'm a, hey, man. Hey, man, you keep doing your thing, man. I like the way you teach, brother, man. Hey, I'm trying to learn from you. It's not about lip service. It's about who's going to be in the fight. Who's going to keep these commandments, right. all right, for, for a long period of time. All right, from there, give me a Proverbs 11 and 13. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 13. Uh-huh. A tailbearer revealeth secret. Read. 
But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. But that faithful friend, that what are they going to do? When, um, when you apply James 5 and 16, they're not going to go reveal your secrets. All right? That's that uh, one counselor out of a thousand. All right? From there, let's go to uh, Sirach. No, no, no. Leviticus 19 and 16. All right? So, brothers and sisters, now this is a learning, learning experience. So, there's a brother and sister that's probably watching this video that is a tailbearer. So let's see what the law says about tailbearing. Give me that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer. So if that's what you were guilty of, stop doing it. All right, repent from that, read. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. All right, so the Most High God says don't, don't do that, all right? Because a spiritual man or woman, they're going to know to stay away from you. Okay, so if you're guilty of that sin, let that thing go. All right, from there, let's go to Sirach chapter 20 and 8. So now we're getting on the topic of being a good friend. Some things that you shouldn't do. All right, give me that. Sirach chapter 20, verse 8. Mm -hmm. He that uses many words shall be a bore. So it says, he that uses many words shall be a bore. So that means hated. All right, so if, you have, if you're trying to show yourself friendly, let the other person talk sometimes, all right? Nobody likes somebody who just takes over the conversation, you don't say nothing ever. That's a selfish person. Read that again. He that uses many words shall be a bull. Uh-huh. And he that taketh to himself authority therein shall be hated. All right, the person who always thinks they're right, the person who always wants to take control at every time, is, is not uh, charitable with their brother or sister, shall be hated, all right? So that's another, a lot of people deal with that. They talk too much. They can't be humble. They can't listen. So what does that mean? You need to esteem your brother. That's the, actually, let's just go to it. Let's go to Philippians 2 and 3. All right? So this is, this is what you need to focus on. You need to not focus on yourself. You need to focus on others around you because it's not about you. It's about the body. All right? Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Uh -huh. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. So that person who always wants to get to shine, this scripture is for you. Read it again. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, uh -huh. but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. So if we do that, you're not going to be talking all the time because you think your brother or sister has something important to say as well. Or, or um, you don't always have to be the one to, to, to teach or step up or answer a question because you got 100% confidence in your brother or sister that they, they, they're capable just as well. All right. Um, from there, let's go to First John three and sixteen to show you how serious, how serious it me, what friendship is really about. All right, it's not just about say, oh, this is my friend. Uh, we go to the movies together. We study together occasionally. No, nah, this is how serious serious this friendship is according to the Bible. Give me that. First John chapter three verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our own lives. For the brother. For who? For the brother. For the brother. All right. Proverbs 18, 24 says you're going to find a friend that is like a brother. And for a brother, how are you supposed to treat him? Read that one more time for me. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. For the brother. All right. From there, give me Sirach 25 and 1. All right. That's just to show you how serious it is, how, how we should care for one another. Give me Sirach 25, verse 1. Sirach chapter 25, verse 1. And three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Mm -hmm. The unity of brother. That's number one. You see that? That's that's how that's beautiful. That's very important to the most high. He said the unity of brother. Alright, read on. The love of neighbor. Mm -hmm. And a man and a wife that agree together. So righteous friendship is a beautiful thing to the most high. Alright? From there, let's go to Deuteronomy 4 and 9. So we're about to close it out. 4 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. All right, brothers and sisters. So um, just don't watch the video and let that go. Take notes. Um, rehearse these righteous acts, all right, so you can apply them in your everyday lives. All right, we're going to close out with 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. All right, so if you are going, you know, if you're in some friendships right now, you offended each other or whatever, apply the scriptures, okay? Um, if you're having problems finding friends, apply the scriptures, all right? All right, give me that. 
First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Uh -huh. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. So if having friends is a desire of your heart, don't talk about it. Just apply the scriptures, and the Most High take care of that. All right, now if you say you're really down for the Most High, your brother or sister offend you, and you get out the spirit, you really ain't about nothing. But it says, talk no more exceedingly proud. Uh, the Most High God is a God of actions, all right? I mean, I'm sorry, actions are weighed. That's how he deals. It's not about lip service. He wants to actually see you do it, all right? With that, we say shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.